After Pitch Perfect became a cult hit, the Bard and Bellas are back with a sequel. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Chloe, oh my god. don't blame yourself. You're a ginger. That's punishment enough. This is not all your fault. This is on all of us. So if we don't win the world, then what are we? Just a bunch of girls that hang out? What's wrong with that? If we don't win, the Bellas are over. This is the biggest challenge that any of us have ever faced. When I was nine years old, my brother tried to sell me for a chicken, so... <laughs> They've added a few new members to the group, and I am here with one of them. Chrissy Fitt plays Florencia Fuentes in Pitch Perfect 2, which hits theaters this weekend. The new girl. <sighs> new girl. So scary. So scary. It's <laughs> like, pack my lunch and go on the first day, and so nervous. Um, yeah, but I, I really, like, literally could not sleep the night before our first rehearsal and then because you were nervous because you were nervous. excited I, I think it was a combination of both i was uh excited on the way there but once i got to the hotel room and realized i was going to meet all these incredibly talented women the next day i was like nervous so i it, it was kind of hard to get some good rest but once i got there elizabeth banks was the one who brought me down to rehearsal and made like the transition really smooth and Everyone's so nice and amazing. Right away, we became friends. So, Bella Boot Camp, does that involve any physical activity? It does. <laughs> and, um, you know, some days we went like full out, and I was like, are we training for like an action <laughs> film? Like, I, I didn't understand what was happening. And then other days we were just, you know, focused on the dancing, which is also a, a great workout. You know, we're really giving it 110% so that we can give the fans the first one. A great experience. You know, I, I'm thinking about your character and the mm -hmm. fact that, like, when we were growing up, there really weren't a lot of Latinas on TV, there weren't a lot of Latinas on film, and now I feel like you were all just blowing up, right? Like, I talked to Gina yeah. Rodriguez a year ago, and nobody knew who she was, and now she is the biggest star in America, and it's not just Gina, <laughs> it's like there's an entire cohort of young yeah. Latina actresses. What has your experience been like in the industry? You know, um, by the way, tell me about it. Like, I would grow up watching TV and, like, not seeing myself represented. And then I'd, I'd like, gravitate towards, like, the one that was darkest or had the darkest hair. Because I'm like, I, I need to, I need to identify. be Princess Jasmine. That's fine. Oh, I, I am <laughs> Princess Jasmine. Uh, yeah, I, I needed to identify with someone. So it's great that little girls can now watch TV and see themselves reflected on the big screens and on the small screens. And, you know, I did a movie with Gina Rodriguez called Philly Brown. And, and Perfect. Yeah, which was you know one of her breakout roles and she's such an inspiration and she's doing such great things and you know it, it has it has uh it has been better uh I think that we still have a long way to go I think that we need more writers more directors more producers and more executives that are Latinos so that we can have be represented even more absolutely so I think that's like the next like the next big step to continue like seeing change happen. Right. I think the longer you're in the industry, the more you realize how much power there is yeah. behind the camera and behind the scenes. Definitely. I mean, that's why I admire, like, Eva Longoria and uh, Sofia Vergara, Jennifer Lopez. They're all creating content. They're all doing things for Latinas that are universal and that people identify whether they're Latino, you know, African-American, Caucasian, because it's all the same stories with just different Colors right. and, and for us, there's sort of the double whammy, right? Yeah. There's the Latino piece of this, but there's also the women piece of Definitely. this. And I, I don't know if you saw, but the ACLU is going to uh, launch an investigation into Hollywood and sexism in Hollywood. Oh, wow. And a big part of that being female directors. And this yeah. is a movie you were in that has an incredible woman. I love Elizabeth Banks. I think she can do no wrong. She She's amazing. <laughs> what was the experience like? How was it different having a female director? Was it different? It was it was definitely different. Um, she is so funny and so uh, she walked like a really fine line about being sensitive and also very assertive. And uh, she, it, it seemed like she had directed fifty films before. It's she's very uh, she's very articulate. She's very smart. She's incredible. And I felt very safe, you know, to kind of improv and explore. And she gave us free range to do these things, but then also kind of like steered the ship when she had to. <laughs> reel it in. Reel it in, reel it in. It went a little too far, got a little too dark. It's usually my... <laughs> uh, but, you know, it was, it was incredible. We need to see more female directors. The attention to detail that she had was just incredible. Like, and there were times where I stayed on set when I didn't have to, just to, like, watch 
her work and and because I'm very inspired by that I think that it, it's a step in the right direction and and we need we need more of a, a female directors for sure this is such a fun movie to watch do you mm -hmm. have like a most fun memory from from doing it it's so hard because there's so many incredible memories that we created we were there for a month uh, rehearsing and then two months filming so I when the Green Bay Packers were there it was like a party <laughs> forget about it those guys are hilarious and they're so much fun they actually know all the choreography to the first pitch perfect so at one point they like did um, in about the money money they did the whole choreography for us <laughs> and it was so funny and so fun uh, you know and and just I got pitch slapped by a lake <laughs> um, I, I did. I, we, there was a blog bounce, and since I'm tiny, they had the stunt guy do it and then propel me up in the air. And there was that point where it turned from, like, acting scared to, like, real scared <laughs> in, the, in the air. I'm just like, oh, oh, gosh, like, I'm going. I keep going. And so I over-rotated and just, like, smacked into the water. So, yeah, I was pitched out by a lake, which now I can say is one of the fun moments. Yeah, but At I'm nervous moment, listening to you talk yeah, about was, it. It was kind of kind of rough, but... <laughs> Do you have a dream role? Uh, you know, I have a dream situation, I think. I, uh, I aspire to star in a movie that I wrote with my writing partner, Serena Fialo, who's amazing, also from Miami, and also be producing it. So that's like my dream situation. Mrs. 305. All right, Chrissy, you were huh. aka awesome. Thank you. You're aka awesome. You're aka awesome. <laughs>